Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, ahead of time, I wanted to wish you all a happy July 4th. Wish I had a paramount that uh, had stars and stripes on it. It'd be pretty cool. Be pretty cool. Uh, but any, in any case, I wish the Lord would bless your worship today. And uh, we ask that of him. Lord, uh, we thank and praise you for bringing us to this place of worship. Uh, help us to take to heart what you have to say to us. Uh, to trust your promises, especially those that you speak to us in Psalm 91, uh, to trust them and uh, not only apply them to ourselves, to apply them to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, looks like, uh, from what I could see, uh, the order of worship is printed up for you in the, in the uh, worship folder, and we'll, we'll follow that. It looks like our first hymn is hymn number 226, 226. Please rise, and we follow the order of worship as it is printed out for you, and I guess it comes up on the, on the screen as well. So uh, one thing, uh, I, I was sitting on my phone, and I just recalled, please make sure your phone is quiet uh, during the course of the service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your natural love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give us strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, you have prepared joys beyond understanding for those who love you. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. first reading for this morning uh, is from Psalm 91, and this is our sermon text for this morning. I'm going to take certain portions of it and bring them to you in the sermon, so I'm not going to explain it to you. I'm just going to read it. Whoever dwells in the shel shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You, you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Here is the reading of the first lesson. The second lesson is taken from Paul's second letter to young pastor Timothy, uh, chapter 1, where we read verses 8 through 14. You may already know this, but this second Timothy is, is Paul's last recorded letter to this young pastor. And he knew, Paul knew his execution was at hand and so forth. And so he encouraged Timothy to hold on and go forward with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. He wrote here, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. 
Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I, whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching. With faith and love in Christ Jesus, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Here ends the reading of the, of, the, uh, of the second lesson, the verse of the day. Hallelujah. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Hallelujah. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Our, sec our Gospel reading is taken from um, selected verses from Mark chapter 5. And here we see that a man named Jairus, he was a synagogue leader in those days, he came to the right one, he came to Jesus. And his daughter was dying. And here once more Jesus displayed his power over death, which that comes to us all. And so this ought to be a comfort for us all. For one day, Jesus will raise us not to everyday life, like the, the, the Jairus' daughter, but to uh, life eternal. Life eternal. So we read, When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. And that was common in those days. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? This child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated and we sing our next hymn. That's hymn number 431. I walk in danger all the way.
May the God of peace uh, fill you with joy in all believing. Amen. As I said, our sermon text is Psalm 91, so I'm not going to read it to you again, but I'll speak of it all through the sermon. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear friends. A battlefield is a dangerous place. And some of you may know that from personal experience. Uh, I don't. I didn't. Until a pastor by the name of McMurdy impressed that upon me because he was in a battle, a terrible battle in World War II uh, that we know as the Battle of the Bulge. He tells the story that uh, the Germans were were coming down the road And the Americans decided to lay low at that point, to be quiet. And that was the order that went out. But somebody didn't pay attention to that order and took a shot at the Germans. And the Germans scattered. They took cover. And Pastor McBurdy was laying laying low. One of the Germans took a shot at him. And the bullets went above his head. Then he heard another shot from his right. And that German was no longer a threat. That soldier to his right said, come over here, you're in a bad place. So he went over there and he said, thanks. And then came the words that became the title of his book from that soldier. Hey, Mac, this is serious business. A guy could get killed. That's the dark humor of the military, right? You guys have been in the military. (laughs) Battlefield is a dangerous place. But not just that kind of battlefield, the battlefield in which we live. Uh, life in this fallen world. The, uh, there are obvious dangers that we walk in, or drive in in some cases. Uh, the car that comes across the median, the cancer that can ravage our bodies. There are dangers to our health, dangers to our safety, even dangers that can come from the food that we buy at the store. But all of those dangers are not so obvious. Some of them the Bible talks about. Spiritual dangers. The Bible speaks of temptation. Temptation that comes from the one who goes around like a prowling lion looking for someone to devour. And too often, dear friends, too often we are mowed down by that temptation that that darkens our lives. Well, in three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we meet the very Son of God going nose to nose with that father of temptation that we call the devil. And he goes up against him, not as the Son of God who could have just you know, made him a pile of charcoal in an instant. No. He goes up against Satan as one of us, as our brother, weak, all alone, knowing that the cross was coming his way. And the outcome of that battle meant everything for you and me. He showed us that he is the Savior that we need. One who was tempted as we are, But what one important difference, he did not sin. Not once, not all through his life, he did not sin. And then later on, as we know, he took that perfect life and he went to the cross and paid the price for each of us. Well, in the scripture, we learn that because of Jesus, we're told that every promise of God is yes in him. Every promise of God. And so we say what we just sang and acknowledge, I walk in danger all the way. But here in Psalm 91, we hear some of those promises of God. And I would say them this way. The Lord, first of all, the Lord is my refuge. Secondly, he delivers us from evil. And finally, he hears my call and promises rescue. Listen to verse 1. 
Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You know, early American settlers, when they came upon some ground that they hadn't been to before, they'd often build a stockade. You know what a stockade was? They'd cut down some trees, they'd put them side by side, and, and, and enclose an area that they wanted to protect. And if an enemy appeared, what did they do? They ran to the stockade to find some protection. Now, of course, the enemy could have climbed over the wall. The enemy could have lit a fire and tried to burn down the stockade, which they sometimes did. But that refuge provided a degree of safety, didn't it? We have a refuge that's far greater. And it's not limited by the thickness of the walls. And we don't have to stay within running distance, huh? We have the Lord. We can be in his shade, as the scripture says. We can know that he is with us, uh, that he is our refuge, that God Almighty is our refuge. As it says here, he is my refuge and my fortress. And you know his love, don't you? We've been singing about it, huh? (laughs) If you know the name, the Lord, you know that love is encased, enclosed in that name. And we've seen his love go into action for each of us. How uh, he... He lived that life that we failed to live. And then he offered that life on that cross so that we are forgiven. We have peace with God. The Lord is my refuge. And he delivers us from evil. He delivers us from evil. He's taught us to pray, hasn't he? Jesus, our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray, deliver us from evil in in the Lord's prayer. But we can know the answer to that already. We can know the answer to that question. He does, he has, and he will deliver us from evil. Let's think, and, and here he, he pictures that promise in a number of comforting ways. And here's one. He says, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare. Maybe maybe you know what a fowler snare was or is. It's a trap. It's a trap to to, to, uh, trap unsuspecting birds. And what traps line the path of our life? We already spoke of them. Temptation. Temptations. The temptation to get angry. The temptation to become very impatient with someone. The temptation to run somebody down with our words. The temptation to drink in pornography. The list goes on and on. And if we are caught and stay caught in that trap, we will be worse off than some birds caught in a fowler's snare. But what does God promise when you when tempted? And some of you heard this in our Bible class today. Listen. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. From 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But all too often we don't. Huh? We give in. We get caught. We give in to temptation. What then? Is there no hope? There's every hope in Jesus Christ. When we call out to him in repentance, he comes to us. He comes to us in his word. He comes to us as he did this morning at the beginning of the service and the absolution. And every week through your pastor who shares with you Jesus' forgiveness. He comes to us as we remember our baptism 
And what God did for us there, and what he promises there, he comes to us in that supper in which he does something so amazing. He, he wants you so much to know that you are forgiven. He gives you his, the same body and blood that he, he gave and shed on the cross for you. When we call out to him in repentance, he comes. And he rescues us from our guilt with his forgiveness. The psalmist also says he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. There were two big hawks that would nest in some of the trees next to the church parking lot when I served out in California. And those hawks made a nest. And they laid some eggs, they hatched some chicks, and the, the father or the mother would just spread out their wings over the nest. And any crow, you know how crows are always trying to raid nests? Well, any crow would be a fool. <laughs> would be foolish to try to <laughs> steal some of the young. Because under those wings, you know what were there, those big, sharp claws. Big, sharp claws. Well, our God doesn't have feathers. <laughs> he doesn't have claws, well, you might say he does, uh, and he doesn't have wings. But he uses that picture to show us uh, and, and promise to us the kind of care that he provides. He even goes on to say that he calls upon his angels to protect us. He calls upon his angels to deliver us from evil. He says it this way, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. And that's one more promise of God, isn't it? But as Jesus taught us when he was tempted by the devil, it wasn't a promise to uh, uh, test God and find out, did he really mean what he said? No. This is a promise to be believed, to be trusted, to find comfort in, that he delivers us from evil. When that world is caving around us, he, he delivers us. He, and, and, and think about that. How often God has delivered us. Think about that. Maybe a near miss. You know, when Pastor, uh, Pastor McMurdy was in that, on that battleground, he just happened to step off to the side. And down came a mortar that missed him, right? How often has God delivered us uh, from some evil? Maybe it's a person that God has sent into your life. You're heading in this direction, a self-destructive direction, a godless direction, and a person, whether it be your parents or a coach or some, some friend, they, they guided you, they, they helped you to head and, and head in another direction. And in that way, God delivered us from evil. But God promises to do more than deliver us from some evil. Okay? He, I walk in danger all the way, and he promises to deliver us from all evil. Listen. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Did you hear that? No harm will come to you. That's God's promise. He delivers us from evil. Okay? And even if he allows evil to come, to come your way, there's another promise that ties in with that. And mark these words. He will somehow, some way, make it work for your good. That, too, is his promise as he delivers us from evil. Ever call someone on the phone? Now, everybody sends text messages today, but we're old enough to call on the phone, right? <laughs> Ever call somebody on the phone with a real problem? You wanted to talk to a good friend or your parent or, or somebody, and, and, and when you call them, you kind of expected 
that you'd have their undivided attention. But then you hear them typing away on their computer. You know, people hear that, you know. <laughs> well, when we call out to God, this is God's promise. He will hear. And he will listen as if you were the only person that was talking to him at that time. But he'll do more than listen. I walk in danger all the way. And as I do, as I do, he hears my call and promises rescue. Listen, he, that's you and me, will call on me, that's the Lord, and I, the Lord, will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. What a promise. What an invitation. What a comfort. <laughs> He's with us, like a good friend who's at our side holding our hand. He's with us. Do not, and then he, we're promised. Again in 1 Corinthians, do not fear. I will help you. I will help you. And he will help us have a long life if that's his will. But then when all is said and done, he will help us through that door that we fear to go through death. What will we find? What will we find when we go through that door? He tells us here in this psalm, God will show us his, his salvation. He will... He will show us the meaning of Jesus' words. Because I live, you also will live. Pastor McMurdy believed that. He believed on that dangerous battlefield that God didn't guarantee that he would not die. But this is what he believed. And I quote, I did come to the point where I was confident that the Lord would care for me. And even if I did die, he would take me to be with him in heaven, not because of what I had done, but because of what Jesus had done for me. And so I walk in danger all the way. We walk in danger all the way. But you and I are safe and sound in the Lord. That's his promise. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now we join with Christians around the world in confessing, the faith, uh, confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and then we... Looks like we continue with our next hymn, the offering hymn, I Leave All Things to God's Direction, Hymn 414. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Let us pray, and you may remain seated. Uh, I just wanted to ask, are there any people that are shut in or home uh, or in the hospital and so forth? Anybody from the congregation there? I'm sorry. Oh, we will pray for Ingrid. Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise and glorify you for the unsurpassed gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We confess that we are unworthy sinners who have transgressed your will and word. We repent of our evil and pray for the faith that trusts utterly and completely in the righteousness of Christ Jesus for our forgiveness. Open our hearts to the mighty power of your word. Teach us to depend on your holy sacrament for spiritual strength. Grant that our minds may be renewed in righteousness, that our consciences may be stirred to choose the good, and that every thought, word, and deed may be brought into captivity to Christ. Give to your church ministers and teachers who have the faithfulness and courage of true prophets, that your people may be built up in faith, abound in good works, rejoice in your love, and finally enter your heavenly kingdom. We pray for our beloved country. Give us citizens who perceive that the standard of all that is right is not personal advancement or private favor, not public opinion or party platform, but your holy will. Lavish your grace on all families, that each home may, by its Christian love and character, be for our children a foretaste of the joy and blessedness of our heavenly home. For all who are in sickness and pain and anguish or suffering, and especially do we pray for Ingrid, for all who are in any danger of body or soul, we pray. Teach them to turn to you and wait on you for your mercy. Grant them hope and a joyous deliverance from all their trials, and let them walk in your light all their days. These things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our refuge and hope, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now, brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And receive with believing hearts the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn is Abide With Me, hymn 588. And notice that we sing selected, uh, I, I forget, there might be like 10 stanzas of that. So we sing 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7. Thank you.
worship this morning, to join you in worship. Uh, I see there are a number of announcements. Please uh, read them and, and, uh, and put them in the practice as, as the case may be. Are there any announcements that need to be made uh, right now? Anyone have an announcement? Okay. Uh, so you'll have another pastor here uh, next Sunday, and uh, he'll uh, handle the re- take the reins and so forth, and then uh, your pastor will return uh, following that. So uh, as I, uh, he's there in, was it North Carolina, or is it South Carolina? He's there for the installation of his daughter. Is she a, a teacher uh, at one of the schools there? So that's a real blessing, and uh, we pray that all goes well, including the travel on the way back. So, so thank you, thank you. Does the pastor usually stand over there by the door? <laughs> okay, I'll do that. 